Well, hi everyone. A number of you know me, um, but for those who are newer, again, we're excited to have you here. Uh, my name is Meg. I graduated from University of Portland in 2021 with a degree in environmental ethics and policy, minors in theology and social justice. Um, graduating in 2021, a, lot, a number of you have heard me talk about this quite a bit, but it was not easy. Um, there were not a ton of job opportunities. I was really interested in policy and advocacy. I really believe that that was a space where I could make a difference. Um, and months went by of me applying to dozens of jobs, networking with folks in my areas of interest with very little return in that area. Um, eventually, I accepted a full-time AmeriCorps role, which I just wrapped up on Monday, which feels like <sighs> a breath of relief, <laughs> which is really good. Um, but that role was not enough to financially support myself. Um, so I did seek out other work. Initially, I was working um, some farmers markets. Um, and then I eventually, a longtime mentor of mine from college, sent me Eco Faith Recovery's job posting. It was social media oriented. And although I didn't have a ton of concrete like resume applicable social media experience, I'm a tech savvy Gen Z person who is too often plugged into the internet. And so I was like, hey, I think I could, you know, make this work. And I'm really interested in kind of the goals and vision of this organization. Um, and so I was like, what the hell? I'll apply. We'll see how this goes. Um, and obviously it's worked out. I'm here. Um, the goal of this internship was to have an intern available for the Ayla Hay Indigenous Center um, for Earth Justice. We, I helped them um, plan in helped them in their planning and execution of Randy Woodley's Becoming Rooted, uh, the inaugural 100 day journey. Um, I really worked with the Elahe team for the first part of my internship, kind of split my time a bit more, um, helping them, you know, promote on social media, get people interested in events, and really just spread the word. Um, one of the really excuse me, exciting things was the book sold out its initial printing, and there was a ton of engagement and a lot of our initial events. Um, but one of the women who worked on the team at Elahe, she often reminded us that. 100 days journey is a marathon and not a sprint. Um, and that was something I often found myself coming back to um, throughout my time collaborating with Ayla Hay. Um, my time with EcoFaith was definitely one of growth as well. Uh, my intentions coming into this role, I remember Janet and Robin being like, okay, we can sit down and kind of like set some goals for you. And I think one thing that's always been hard for me is I don't know what my goals are. I don't know, like for me getting some, I, I feel like I know what I got out of something at the end. I, I have a hard time envisioning that. And I also don't want to box myself in to only want to get like a certain thing out. Um, and so for me, often what comes to mind is just like building relationships and getting to know people. And I think also personally, I was motivated as someone who was raised Christian, went to Catholic high school, went to Catholic college and have really like fallen away from Christianity and the church, just finding other ways to like nourish my spiritual identity um, as someone who doesn't feel as aligned with Christianity anymore and what it has taken shape in the US. Um, and so I really just wanted to engage with people. These Thursday morning meetings are obviously a part of that, but I also had a bunch of one-to-ones, um, both virtually in person. Um, and those were all great experiences. Time out at the Elahe farm, meeting with Randy and Edith Woodley. Um, these were all times where I found myself like really intentionally being called to slow down, center myself and like the present. And that was super helpful um, as a person who was doing a million things, you know, this wasn't my full-time role and I often had a ton going on. Um, I think one of the hardest things for me in this role was balance. Again, I, um, I was excited to be able to take on something that I saw myself fitting into well, but at the end of the day, I was truly seeking out additional financial support for myself. Um, I was really hoping to be able to put more emotional energy into this work, but often found myself at the end of the five-day work week exhausted from my main role. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, I was doing essentially casework for students who are, it was college access work for a group of seniors who 
95% of them are attend are intending to enroll in the fall. They all just graduated about two weeks ago. So that went really well, but it was exhausting. And for those who are familiar with AmeriCorps, it's exhausting. Um, so uh, that was really difficult. And I know that some Thursday mornings, it was so hard uh, for me to pull myself out of bed and engage in a space with folks who are older than me and often those with more resources, whether it was financially, time, et cetera, and who were able to dedicate more of themselves to this work than I felt I was able to in, in these moments. Um, but I often also found myself coming back to uh, practice seven, which is um, restoring balance. Um, when we share this at the end of our meetings, I know we'd be like, oh, what are some actions we're taking? And I'd often be like sleeping or like going outside, um, you know, whereas other folks would be like, I'm helping organize like this huge like rally and, da -da, and I'm just like, I'm so tired. I'll try to come if I can. Um, and so that was often how I showed up in these roles. And I was also really grateful that I was able to show up very honestly. Um, I'm not a person who is dishonest. I honestly hate feeling censored um, in these kinds of ways. And so in looking back, I could scold myself for taking too much on, not taking enough time to fill my cup, but how can I? How much of a choice did I really have in all of this? I'm grateful that I was able to seek out additional work that was with an organization that paid well, cared about my well being, valued my honesty and insight. But at the same time, I do wish that I could have been able to put more emotional energy and intention into this work. I'm incredibly grateful for the grace that all of you have given me, the willingness you've had to meet me where I'm at and tell me that that is good enough. Um, I One critique I wanted to share also with all of you that I think is important and a lot of us are aware of and kind of are aware of in general in Portland and um, Oregon and even broader is um, and one question I found myself kind of coming back to when writing a bit was, what does it mean to be white in a predominantly white city, state, and engaging with a predominantly white organization? Um, although my internship was to partner with an indigenous-led organization, what other steps can be taken to make sure this organization is more inclusive and one that centers leadership and voices of people of color? Although our work and intentions try to follow leadership and actions from people of color, we often seek it from outside of the organization and lack the drive to, I don't often see the critique of ourselves, you know? And I think that's hard too. Um, but have you ever sat in one of our meetings and asked yourself, why is it so white? Uh, when we ask ourselves to invite additional people into this group, who comes to mind for you? Is your, is your network predominantly white, whether it be professionally or personally? Um, and just, again, I just encourage all of us to continuously interrogate these things. Um, and this was one area I saw for room of growth. This is one area I saw, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was one area that I saw. And I think, you know, as someone who went to University of Portland, who lives in Portland, I interrogate this of myself as well. Um, but I just think it's, you know, keep asking questions, keep looking inwards and, you know, anti-racism work is never over um, and so that's important to ground ourselves into which I know a lot of us are very grounded in already and try to be very intentional about. Um, lastly to kind of wrap things up I am excited to continue on growing and building my community in Portland. I'm starting a new full-time role at Impact Northwest and we'll only have to have one job to financially support myself. Um, I'm very excited for the future and emotional to also move forward with the unknown. Um, and I kind of, the last bit of this, I actually wrote about a year ago, a lot of stuff personally changed for me last year. I graduated college, my childhood dog passed away. My mother ended up moving here due to some difficult family circumstances. Um, me and a longtime partner broke up, all of this in like a span of three months. And it was just like, and in the midst of this, before actually a lot of it happened, I was reflecting on change. And I think I can be hesitant to change. It can feel scary. A lot of us, a lot of people can be hesitant to change. And I wrote this on like a road trip and I found it kind of wrapping up well. But Change is scary, yet it is something we are all so familiar with. I think one of the easiest ways to frame this for myself is accepting change as the only constant. And by trying to find comfort in it, I get to try as many things as possible. Um, 
And David, your words really resonated with me as well. Um, I hope you know that this is a space where you get to show up as you are. Um, and at the same time, hope is what will carry us forward, whether it's hope for ourselves, for our relationships, for our future. Um, but it's okay to not have that in every moment because this world is very difficult at times and it often feels I can totally relate to being burnt out. And so I just hope you um, find some rest and comfort in this space as well. But thank you all again. Like I said, I'm very, very grateful for the grace that all of you have given me, the willingness you've all had to meet me where I'm at and tell me that that is good enough. Um, but yeah, thank you all. Meg, thank you.